It really kind of makes you think that all that shit's complete fucking bullshit. All of the fantasies of singularity and space travel are just the things we tell ourselves as the microwave gets warmer and warmer and as we start popping like sausages. It really is fitting that a fucking scamp, like a Lyle Landley guy like Elon Musk is the richest man in the world right now on paper. And that his companies are obscenely valued considering what they put out. It's because he is the person who, more than anyone, represents a, uh, a, a future. Because capitalism is without future. Everyone knows that. Everyone can see before them that the given structure we have leads only to immiseration and annihilation. Everyone on all sides is agreed upon, no matter if you're reactionary, you're leftist, you're liberal, you see the, the way things are going. You see the trend line. Unless you're Steven Pinker, you don't think there's a future. But then you've got this guy, Musk, who's, hey, he's the richest guy in the world. He must know what he's talking about. He must be able to master this stuff. Who says, we're going to do tunnels underground. We're going to have... Uh, we're going to have renewable batteries everywhere and electric cars, and we're going to have Mars missions, and we're going to have brain, uh, we're going to have brain, uh, what the fuck's it called? Neural links? We're going to have a fucking cybernetic brain links. We're going to have a sci-fi future. And that is his role, is to, is to allow people to perform some some sort of uh, faith in the continuity of the system through a technological innovation. But all of this stuff is made up. It's maybe hypothetically possible, but its distance from being practically applicable is cavernous. And pursuing it while everything else falls apart and while all of the things that we take for granted as, as part of the the technological and economic infrastructure that power the global system are are losing uh, their uh, functionality, are turning, are, are fucking falling apart before our eyes. It's it's madness. It's it's the final Ponzi scheme at the end of capitalism, which has just been since it's begun a series of Ponzi schemes, like Ameri the American experiment is a Ponzi scheme. It is the fantasy of eternal and unending growth. That there will always be something for the next guy to have. And what has allowed that to happen uh, has been technology. So that you concentrate capital, concentrate it, concentrate it, you destabilize uh, a biome, you destabilize a social order, Technology comes in and saves the day. Technology rescues the instant. Or if it's thanks to some, if there's, you know, before, before we had a global economic structure, uh, one collapse would be uh, made up for by a boom somewhere else. But now uh, that's all foreclosed. And so... We are now left with this fantasy of technology um, unmoored from reality, but somehow worth real money because at this point we cannot afford, in a literal sense, to acknowledge the nudeness of the emperor because there's no other emperor. There's nobody else in town. No one else can can uh, resolve the contradictions within the system. Any other meaningful attempt to get out of this, this uh, crisis requires challenging capitalism. And that is the one thing that can't be allowed to happen.